So now that we've got a pretty decent warm up, if you did some stretching on your own, which I, I would recommend that you have done. If you didn't stretch before, that, that was also why we were just doing things pretty, pretty light and controlled just to get a good warm up here for your body. Always stretch afterwards. Um, and I would say probably stretching after any activity is the primary time frame to do um, hard stretching because your body has been warmed up and it should be kind of nice and loose from whatever you've done, whether you did 15 minutes exercise, a half an hour or even an hour. The longer, you, the longer time session that you put in for exercising, you want to spend more time um, stretching afterwards. So like if you only did a 10 or 15 minute exercise uh, session for the day, uh, five, five minutes of stretching is pretty good after that. If you did 30 to an hour, you're going to want to stretch a good maybe 10 to 15 minutes after that hour or more, 15 to 20 minutes of hard stretching. You don't have to really increase it a whole, whole lot as far as your time length of stretching. It's more on the intensity that you do. So remember, you always get out of what you put into anything, especially for stretching. Okay, so getting into our session today for progression. Again, what is progression? I talked about it earlier. It's moving from one kick to the next kick to the next kick, but it's more than just um, your series or you know a parallel of kicks, meaning one, two, three. It's more along the lines of I use this tool and it's not working for me. So what tool would I use next? Well, there's two areas that you're going to go into. One, why isn't it working for you? That's going to take you into a whole nother area of uh, figuring out which tool to use next. And the second one. What is determining that it's not working for you? So um, not working for me, meaning I'm missing my opponent. I'm missing the target. Um, I'm hitting, but not scoring. Um, I'm hitting, but maybe they're hitting me back too as well, right? So there's a lot of different things in there that constitute into what's not working. But we're going to go and camp around I'm missing my target. Person's moving out of the way. So we're going to keep it really basic and simple, um, so that way it's easy to understand, easy to digest for you guys. Okay, so basic, roundhouse kick, huh. Huh. you can become very, very progressive after your roundhouse kick because since that's our Taekwondo signature kick, there are so many variations to use even from just that kick. So I'm going to explain one uh, really quick here for you, and then we're going to do a drill. You have your short range roundhouse kick, huh. and I, I probably am going to draw back behind me every time I do that kick there. Huh. I'm not trying to go for distance. Remember, I'm, I'm close range here. I can land to the front if I want to on that one as well. Huh. So this is the kick that I told you earlier when we were doing the warm up of the roundhouse kick. A lot of people do mistakenly, but it's their only kick, and that's what you don't want. You don't want just that as your only roundhouse kick. You want to have a short range, a medium range, mid-level range, and then a long range, which we'll go over those here in a second. That's your progression of roundhouse kick, of just your basic first level progression, 101. Okay, so short range, land down the front, or the back. I'm not trying to go for distance. Then I have my mid-range, where I'm always going to land down to the back. I mean, always laying down to the front. I'm reaching out a little bit. Then I have my long range because this one I really need to reach. Here's where a lot of people think um, the progression comes in on this one. And it's mostly just a natural habit of instinct. They're going to jump and swing that leg way out. But you've seen how that just looks. Not very um, effective or productive. It's similar to that. So what I do here is I actually do, I do take a small step with that front foot and I really give myself a long hard pivot. See how I landed here? Because I turned my body so much that you know, I'm landing in this lengthy long turned position. Right? Okay, so we're gonna do a drill here. Just kicking in the air. If you're with a partner, you guys want to kick on a bag or you want to kick on a paddle or a shield or anything like that. Or if you just have a bag and you want to kick on the bag, 
or target or shield anything to hit, go ahead and feel free to do that. What you would do in that situation though, if you got something that's stationary, you're gonna start close, short range kick, back up a little bit, medium range kick, then you're gonna back up a lot, long range, boom. Full turn all the way in. For those of us that are just kicking in the air at home, just kicking in the air, laying down to the front, set back up. Okay, here we go, ready? And short, hook, medium, hook, long, hook. Same thing again. And short, hook, medium, hook, long, hook. Now, one thing you might think of, well, if I'm taking that step before I kick, isn't that telegraphing a little bit on the kick? Yes, it is. But we're just learning that progression right now. You can hide that movement with a check. Huh. So you watch me from the side here. Huh. See that check there, that stomp and snapping my hand and foot out gives me that extra step that I need. And then from here, I can launch that really long kick. So it's hiding that movement with the check. Here we go again. Ready? And short. Huh. Medium. Huh. Long. Huh. So if you do want to add that check in there right now, go ahead and do that. Huh. Right? Okay, other side. Now we'll do the drill. Here's the drill. Timer. Get as many of these sets in as we can. Find the timer. Okay, ready? And go. Huh. 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 Bow. Bye. Huh. Huh. Bye. Bow. Huh. Huh. And time. So I got like nine kicks in there. That was about three sets. I think I did, or maybe that was six. Somewhere around there. <laughs> Okay, so that's the drill. So that's your basic progression. That's what progression is. It's moving forward from one stage to the next stage to the next stage. The, the rule with progression, or at least the rule that I like to follow along with it, is keep it simple. The simpler it is, the easier, it's a, it's, uh, the easier it is for anybody to do, the easier it is for everybody to be able to follow, even beginners. Okay, now we're gonna go into a progression that is a little bit more advanced. Um, but you should be able to follow along with us, even if you don't know these two kicks here. And this is a perfect progression setup that we have in one of our forms, Blue Wave form, that Master Perez has put together. It is your roundhouse kick, turning roundhouse kick, into the Nadabon. Let me show you that here. Roundhouse, up to oil chuggy, hup, turning roundhouse kick, hup, Nadabon. Perfect progression. Now that, again, like I said, it's not only advanced because the kicks are slightly advanced, a situation where I would have to use that to go from a roundhouse kick to a turning roundhouse kick or turning roundhouse kick to Nadaban is gonna be a more advanced situation in sparring or something that I'm using that for. Probably not something likely you're gonna see in beginner divisions, intermediate divisions, maybe, maybe advanced divisions, your, your blue and red belts. Um, you'll probably see a progression where you're going to use a, a, a combo or progression uh, system like that in probably a black belt level. But it's still good to do, it's still good to learn, and fun, fun to use too as well. So watch again. Roundhouse kick. Huh, land. Then I'm going to spin, kick with the same leg. Huh. Then I'm going to do the same thing, and the difference is I'm going to jump and switch my feet on this kick. So I spin this one around. The first one, or the second one, I land on the floor, but this one I hold it up, and then I jump and switch that kick. Make sure my mics are still on. Okay, here we go. And Han, hup, dual, hup, set, hup. Okay, bring it back. Same thing again, and Han, hup. Do. Hup. Hup. <clears throat> so 
that one I sped up a little bit more. I did the second one, third one together quicker. I did two counts on that. This one we're gonna do one count all the way through. When I say Hana, Ronald's kick, turn around, I'll kick, not a bond. Here we go, ready? And Hana, hop, hop, hop. Back it again. Two, hop, hop, hop. Now, same thing, other side. Here we go. Oh, left leg back. And Hana, hop, do, hop, set, hop. Hana, hop, do, hop, set, hop. Bring it back. One more time, all the way through, no stops. Here we go. And Shiduk, hop. One more, and shoot up. Hup, hup, hup. And put a row. Hup, show. Now on your spin kicks, one of the most important things that you need to do when you spin is spot. You have to eyesight when you're turning. I gotta look. And right now for me, what's helping me is I'm looking right directly into the camera I'm just using my phone to, to do this one here. So it's giving me a visual target, something I can aim at. So this way I'm looking and turning around right in the camera. Um, and that's where I'm releasing my kick, towards, right towards the camera. So it's helping me aim a little bit. So whatever you're using at home, um, your screen or something like that, whatever you're watching, use a visual uh, target that you can kind of aim at. Don't hit it, <laughs> just aim at it. Okay, so again, that was, a very basic, easy progression, which was your roundhouse kick from um, close range, medium range, long range, and then a little bit more of an advanced progression here with your roundhouse kick, turning roundhouse kick, and then you're not about. Now, proper progression. What kick do I specifically use next, no matter what is happening? Again, there's two categories you're going to go into, or, or a number of category, categories you're going to go into, um, determining why your kick is not working. Again, we're just going to stick with the area of, I'm not hitting the opponent, I'm missing them, for whatever reason, all right? Has nothing to do with what they're doing back or anything, I'm just, I'm missing, so most likely they're moving. One of the best kicks to start out with in matches is your fast kick. It's a safety kick. Skipping roundhouse kick, boom. Okay, very simple to do, even for beginners. It's a one-two movement. Eventually you wanna work it down to a one movement, but a one-two, one, or let me see, I'm kicking with the front leg here. One, two, snap. Watch me again. One, two, snap. Hup. Okay, now eventually working it down to more of a one movement where I'm gonna jump off of both the feet at the same time, pop. I'm trying to get them to move at the exact same time here. Oh. And I don't wanna jump up. I don't wanna telegraph a big movement. I wanna stay low and shoot outward. So if you watch me here from the camera, you'll see my head level doesn't go up very much where I move my body out more is what I'm gonna do. Pop. So. It's not a knockout kick, it's just a safety kick. It's a scoring kick, and it's a kick to be able to throw, to be able to kind of surprise or frustrate the opponent a little bit. And you can consider that like a jab in boxing. Jab's not necessarily a um, knockout punch, but it's an entree technique, it's an entree punch, meaning it's a good one to start with to be able to throw that hard knockout punch. Boom, you know, you lead up with the jab. So same thing with the, the fast kick. So we're gonna work on a progression chord here with kicking. And I say chord because that's usually used in music. However, it's all art. So our progressive chord, fast kick, 
here hop, to your running fast kick, which I'm going to take the back leg and I do the one, two, but I bring it in front of the tart in front of my leg here a little bit more to the third one, fast double kick. Okay, here we go. So three kicks of progression. Fast kick. Hup. Running fast kick. Hup. Fast double kick. Hup. Hup. One more time. Fast kick. Hup. Running fast kick. Hup. Fast double kick. Hup. Hup. Okay, now. Those are the three kicks. We're gonna work a drill with those. So what I want you to do here on the first one, which is the fast kick, I want you to knee pitch forward and back down. Back down. Just like that. I'm gonna use a ring here to kind of illustrate, you don't have to have one, but just to kind of illustrate the amount of distance you should be moving on this drill here. I got one foot in the ring, second one hops in, and then I skip back down to my first, uh, to the, foot, the initial foot that was in the ring. Okay. Again, you want to try to not hit these or step on them, but we're not using them for speed and agility. That's what the rings are usually for. We're using them just for the amount of distance uh, you should be moving during a drill like this one. Okay, here we go, ready? And we'll do 20 seconds on the clock. Actually, we'll shorten that up, 15 seconds, because this is a pretty quick movement, and we'll do both legs. If you don't have anything, don't worry about it, just do the movement in the air, and go. Other side. A couple of pointers. This one I want you guys to do on your own while I explain some pointers while you're doing it. Okay, ready? In position. Other side, other leg, and go. One thing you want to make sure you're doing is knee pitching up at least your, your waist height. It should be coming up at least waist high. The other thing is you want to try to push that hip forward a little bit when you knee pitch up here. It's not just a knee pitch like this and you're kind of crunching body just to pick that leg up. No, I'm, I'm preparing for my kick. So if I had to stop here in mid-motion but I also had to kick, I should be able to throw a pretty uh, effective snap I would say there. May not be a knockout kick but an effective snap. Okay. Whoops. Now, nah. This one here, uh, actually, yeah, for the next drill, I'm not going to use that ring anyway. This is the running fast kick. This might be a new one for some of you guys here. All right. What, again, what I do is I cross running step. One, two, three. Cross running step on this kick. Hup. I am jumping a little bit on this one. This one helps me get a little bit more distance when I need it. Hup. And I can still, a person can practice this and get really good. You can still throw this kick quite fast to where it's still going to be considered a safety kick because it's not going to be that detrimental to me if I miss or if my timing is a little off with it, okay, because of the uh, nature of the kick. Hup. Okay, so the movement that we're doing here on this one is just going to be that cross running knee pitch. Hup. Skip back. Hup. Skip back. Hup. Skip back. Okay, here we go. 15 seconds on each one of these. I want to make sure everything is still running here real quick. Okay, here we go. Hup. 
and 15 seconds. Go. Huh. 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 As you can see, when I'm doing this here, you don't want to make you want to make sure that I'm cross-stepping here like this. I'm not running forward and turning and exposing, you know, the the backside of my shoulder or body. It's a cross step again. So this way, I still can keep my body in a good, safe position. Here we go. Other side, knee pitch only. Go. Hup. 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 Hup, 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 and time. Show. Last one is that fast double kick here. Okay, so your fast double kick is exactly what it is. It's a double kick, but you're starting it with a fast kick motion or fast kick style instead of your traditional back leg, front leg. This would be the traditional back leg, front leg. One, two. Fast double. I do a fast kick motion first. Huh. Two. Jump and switch. So what we're going to do from this one here is just um, knee pitches. So skip forward, knee pitch, jump and switch. Huh. 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 Okay, what's important is making sure your knees stay nice and tight together on the, on the exchange, on the crisscross, and you're not making it too wide. And the knees, again, are coming up high. So you'll watch me on my trajectory here. First knee kind of pitches up. Second knee crosses through that line. In order for me to be able to close my body off to make it hard for somebody to defend against that. As Mr. Miyagi would say, if do right, no can defense. Okay, here we go. Ready? And ha, ha. Ha, ha. Oh, forgot to put the timer on. Let's go. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. I'm going to do it off an angle here so you can see a little different. And switch. Other side. Hup, hup. Hup, hup. Hup, hup. Hup, hup. And put a Show. So that was today's quick lesson for you guys. Um, I don't really know how long it was. I wanted it to just be about 30 minutes, so it might be somewhere around there. Um, you can watch this a few times. Again, this video is only going to be up um, maybe for a couple of days or two. I'm going to take bits and pieces out of this and then post it to the YouTube channel. But I uh, hope you guys had a good class here today. Enjoyed your snow day. Stayed home warm and safe. Hot tea, cocoa, chocolate milk, whatever it is you're doing and be ready to hit back at our norms tomorrow. So we'll see you guys all on the next video.